Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is George Jarrett Helm Jr. I was born and raised in Kalamula, the homestead site. Went to Honolulu to get an education. Instead, I lost my innocence. Kohe Malama Lama O Kanaloa. Aloha Aina Ohana was formed through the concern for the future of the Hawaiian people. George Helm and other concerned individuals on January 4th, 1976, committed themselves by landing on the island of Kaho Olave to show the serious concern towards the problems and issues that will affect the culture and lifestyle of the Hawaiian people. His music was a way for him to communicate to people. It became a tool to educate and make aware of the serious problems Hawaiian people face in today's established society. My name is George Helm and I'm the uh, director of the Protect Kahoolawe Association. This organization came into being as a result of a commitment and a serious concern for the Hawaiian's future and the human attitudes that will come with her. In essence, our concern is toward making pathways for the proper use of Hawaii's natural resources, her people, her land, her waters, and all which comes willingly from the Aina. Every island is potent, every part of each island, small or big, is significantly valuable. Every little drop of water, every little grain of sand have given us the mighty ocean and the fruits of this pleasant land. Philosophically, Kaho'olabi represents a conflict between two different attitudes and ideas of the way man should relate to his environment. What we're involved with is a conflict between concern versus apathy. We are definitely in need for a careful examination of the direction of Hawaii which she is headed toward. Our purpose is to collect the best criteria as possible for research and make aware to the general public what Kahu'olawe really is and means historically, environmentally, and socio-ethnically. She is not a barren rock that should be used as a target for military bombing practices in the name of national defense. The strength of our national defense lies in the spirit of the people, not in the contradictions of warfare, the contradictions of political garbage, nor the contradictions of gross misuse of economics. 
There is no room for compromise compared to combat readiness. All other considerations must remain secondary in the interest of national defense. You folks know what national defense is. This is a military school over here, or at least it was at one time. And it teaches folks those things. National defense is necessary because of, you know, man's frailties, man's greed. You know, the world problem is man's greed, man's ego. So we gotta interpret, you know, for our political existence that we need national defense. So let's use Kaholabi and bomb the thing, bomb the shit out of that island. You know, and then let's say this is national defense. But me, I sit back and I let my intelligence think about it, whatever the degree of my intelligence may be. And I say, wow, you know, to me, national defense is in the spirit of the people. It's in the heart. If the people know what a heart for defend their country, that's bad already. So we gotta go restore those things. I'm gonna restore them by putting dignity and integrity into the hearts of people. That's what national defense is. National defense is not killing. You know, we're spending a lot of money to kill people, okay? That's the trend. That, that has been the trend for 200 years, 300 years. When are we going to start changing it? Who, what people have the different things in their culture that can teach the other world what it is to love? I say the Hawaiians have it. The composition by the Queen Tilly Okalani while she was imprisoned at Iolani Palace in the 1800s. I've written this song for her garden place. Now the location of the Holiday Inn Hotel. <laughs> Bear with me for a while. I've got a very bad cold. name is Kohe Malamalama Kanaloa. The word Kohe means vagina. Okay? I'm glad I don't see any shocked faces. Those guys went down uh, sacred hearts and everybody was shamed. Okay. <laughs> 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 I've been no. five years on these guys have been shot. No, but that, but that is the truth. The word Kohe means vagina. But there's a reason for it. See, because in Hawaiian thinking, see, life comes from the womb. Mother Earth, that's where it comes from. Malama means shining. Shining could mean direction. See, the light that directs you to certain places. Malama Lama. Malama could also mean sacred. Okay, Kamaloa, folks know who he is. He's ocean god, god of the ocean and the seas. Okay, 
So take those three things into consideration. Kohe, malamalama, kanaloa. The womb, the vagina, okay? Malamalama, shining, direction, kanaloa, ocean god. Right from Kaholabe, underneath the water, there's a mountain ridge that connects itself to Tahiti. Directly, straight mountain thing, okay? Now there is a channel over there called Kiala Tahiti. That is the pathway to Tahiti. So in other words, Kahualawe could be the place where the Hawaiians meditated to go or left from when they went to the South Seas, to Kahiki, to Tahiti. So we're using a, the word or the name Kohe Malamalamo Kanaloa and coming up with these conclusions, these implications. So, in other words, we're saying that Kaholawe is not a piece of rock. It has more meaning than just a rock. The Hawaiians probably found it very sacred. You see, now we gotta go back to a certain part of our Hawaiian history. You see, we cannot use our mental telescope, our American mental telescope and look at the Hawaiians and say, ah, oh, look at those natives over there. They were only fishermen. Yeah, because they got a lot of fishing shrines on the island, okay? Or they only plant potatoes over there because the weather and the climate of that island can only grow potatoes. But let our mental telescope look at things that the history books do not record, such as the place must have been very sacred. But who's going to tell us that? Not the scholars, the old Hawaiians that we came across. See, in Hana, Molokai, Keokaha. Tell you folks, this is a very serious thing. Kaholawe is not a flash in the day and a flash going home at night. It's a lot of things that have to be done. So I'll tell you folks what we did. We formed an organization called Protect Kaholawe Association. This organization is to see that Kaholawe is protected. Best advice came from the young lady over there. She said, we want to leave that island alone. Okay, and I think if we can give Mother Nature back to Kaolawe, fine. We gotta go fight, you know, the military first of all, the politicians, then different kind of ways of thinking. I am uh, Vice Admiral Coogan, a commander of the United States Third Fleet, and responsible, among other things, for the administration of special use airspace assigned to the Navy in the Third Fleet area. There is a very real requirement for the Kahulawi Island Target Complex. The past and projected utilization fully substantiates the military's need for this complex. Training facilities afforded at Kahulawi for all services cannot be duplicated at any of the existing training areas in the Hawaii area. First, I'd like to uh, say aloha and welcome you to our home. My name is Loretta Ritty and I am speaking as a Hawaiian and as a native of this Aina. One thing I've learned from my kupunas as a Hawaiian is the great respect for the Aina. For the Aina is the giver of life, of life. And if we do not respect the land, then where will we be? How do we take care of Papa? our earth by filling her pores with concrete, her beauty, so she cannot breathe, by digging into her, drilling into her, bombing her to leave wounds and scars on this earth. Is that how we take care of our land? <laughs> the most significant value of Kaolavi is that it is the only facility in the Hawaiian area permitting the training necessary for military forces to effectively coordinate the employment of all available supporting arms. And why the stress on war? Why is it so important that we practice to kill? Why? Why can't we practice peace and love? All our songs talk about love, the very natural things, the elements of nature, the way, the aina, the pohaku, 
the flower, the pua, everything that came from this earth. And that's what the Protect Kahaolawe Ohana is all about. We're saying that our kupuna is asking us for the proper respect to the heritage and to the souls that are still living around this Hawaii name. So our feeling is just a feeling of love for our Hawaiian people. Anticipation that Kaholavi once again be returned to the fifth district. I second a motion. You've all read the motion and the discussion. I come just to support the resolution and I'm very grateful for having this opportunity upon invitation. This is a step forward in helping to bridge the gap between the politicians and the people who elect you here. Kaho'olawi is synonymous to Aloha Aina. We love the land. And if all us Hawaiians can go over there and touch it, you know, we all come together. A lot of problems. And every time you read the newspaper, all these Hawaiians, they say, oh, one more group popping up over here, one more heia coming up, the Hawaiian Association, the Hawaiian Homestead Association, the Council of Hawaiian Organizations, Aloha, you know, the Hawaiian, the Congress of Hawaiian people. What's the matter with these Hawaiians? Can I get together? Now Kahoolawe, Chi, now Makua Valley. What's the matter with these Hawaiians? And I said, it's beautiful. I wish more organizations pop out because you know why? That shows that the problems are very, very critical. And we want people to look at it because, you know, Kama'aina means the child of the land and every one of you that have that Hawaiian blood in you is a child of this land. And you are attached to it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you know, and you have that blood running through your veins. And if Dick and Jane, if the Dick and Jane book's not going to make you proud of what you are, then Kahawalawi is going to. That's what we intend to do. <laughs> Even on Molokai, we're sleepy over there. That's what they say, sleepy old Molokai. But we're waking up. We're finding out we're Hawaiians, and we're very proud to be Hawaiians. And the first thing I always say, man, I went to camp school, but I wasn't proud to be Hawaiian when I went to camp school. I had all Hawaii teachers, every single one, except my PE teacher, Mr. Mookini. It's the only Hawaiian teacher I had. And I was never taught to be proud of my blood. And right now, this past few years, just getting involved with Kaha Olave. That's what I feel the most. I'm proud of my Hawaiian blood and nobody gonna tell me any different. And anytime any Hawaiians need help, we're gonna help because we're strong ohana. That we're gonna put back together, the ohana. Because we're all gonna stick together and win our battles. 
Will your new organization be the focal point for the suits in the future, and could you briefly describe how the new organization will be acting? Our organization is to purposely find the best means to protect Kaolawe from any means of destruction, whether it be military bombs or political garbage or misuse of economics. And we think it is necessary to have a focal point. And the association hopefully can represent you know, the best interest of the people and for those that are seriously concerned about what happens to us. And you're suing on several grounds. Several grounds, Could yes. You briefly summarize those. <laughs> there are several environmental statutes that have been violated. And these statutes are the Federal Water Pollution Act, the Marine Protection Research and Sanctuary Act of 1972, the Hawaii Environmental Quality Act, and the Clean Air Act. We are <coughs> researching yet and <coughs> are looking for other devices to really demonstrate what the purpose of Protect the Hawaii Association is all about. It's very important that we get together. We got to shed off a lot of the images that have been thrown on top of us by newspapers, by television. We just want one thing to talk to you folks about. Is this is the seed today of a new revolution. And we're not talking about the kind like the pilgrims came over here and run away from England, go wipe out the Indians, you know, and call this America and celebrate 200 years with firecrackers. But the kind of revolution we're talking about is one of consciousness, that consciousness, awareness, facts, figures. And like Walter said, we're going to the Iolani Palace to make ho'okupu to our kupuna, yeah? our ali. We hope to put somebody back in there. We're serious. We got to think this way. We got to talk that way because that's the only facts that allow for change. And change is synonymous to revolution. And revolution comes from the word revolving, turning in and out so that you have something better, better to live with. And we say again, we want to get rid of that image, radicals. We don't know what that word means, but I know a lot of people get turned off by us, not giving us a chance. You know, we're not getting our kicks doing this. This is the beginning. After this, bow, we're going down to something else. What we're looking for is the truth. The truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. Aloha no.
反応